thank you very much for coming to the um, second talk of the first year studio, organized by the first year studio, um, uh, which is held by Franz Xaver Bayer. Um, we have a, a slightly different setup today. We have Justine from first year uh, reading a text, partly, and Franz uh, operating the, the images. And um, I have a very uh, special and particular relationship to to Francis work and I'm actually really excited that he's here today um, and it took a bit of convincing because um, he feels his English is not good enough and uh, but I think it probably is so uh, it's really great that he's here today and um, despite that uh, maybe shyness. Um, Franz is a professor at the Munich um, uh, University of Applied Science. Um, I just asked him before if I can call him an architect um, and he said he's trained as an architect, but he's probably a little bit more of a, of a scientist or somebody who's looking into the theory of, of uh, I'm not sure how to say this, he probably will. Living space. Living space. Uh, he's probably able to explain this much more. Um, maybe before pa I pass over to, to Franz and to Justine, I just wanted to say, when I started teaching about Twelve years ago, um, I, I started to have a s I particular interest in, in moment spaces, or into kind of the spaces that make moments, or moments that make spaces. And there was really not much I could go and read contemporary. I mean, except maybe some older works. And then suddenly, somebody sent me his book, um, which was this book, which I still have, and it was sent by the publisher to me to the AA. And I was so excited because it actually really helped me to kind of start a teaching and to kind of look at it. But it was only in German, so I could never give it to any student. Um, so I'm particularly excited that you're here today and that you made the effort to, to do this in English. And, and I, hope it, uh, I hope it'll do, some, do something to you. Okay, please join me in welcoming Franz Xaver Bayer. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Thank you. sentences in English. Dear friends of architecture, thank you for coming. Thank you, Valentin, for invitation and cooperation. Thank you, my friend Fritz and Marion, for helping me. What I would like to show you today is a vivid picture of man and his living space. And I want to show the, pos the possible consequences arising therefrom for you for architecture and for life in general. What you hear is a composition of a small selection from my publications of the last years. My possibilities in English speaking are not so funny, therefore I am glad that Justine will read it. So please enjoy. Thank you. Spatial characterizations may be simplistic or even wrong. Studies of humans often reduce the spatial existence of humans to a single point, for instance, their home address. This can easily lead to poor analysis, for example, when considering disease transmission, which can happen at work or at school, and therefore far from the home. The space in which we live is not primarily the geometric and concrete. How we arrange our lives is not identical with the blueprints of architecture, its buildings, paths, squares, and cities. Living space has its own architecture its own geometry. It is of a different reality and extends itself right through and beyond the erected environment. One, always been outside, embedded, amid. We are no objects. Existence has always been out outside. A human being is nothing else but his environment. Existence in orienting itself and comprehending does not first sprout from an inner sphere in which it has been encapsulated, but has in its very nature been outside from the start. Also, the outside existence of objects is in fact an existence inside. The perceptive being remains outside as existence, also when examining, preserving, and retaining. Even in the process of forgetting something, through which apparently every relationship of existence to the once recognized is extinguished, has to be understood as a modification of the original state of inexistence. Life is being amid. Our primary existence is not like something in a box. 
Our life is not contained somewhere in an environment. In a fundamental way, we are omitted. Heidegger, Heidegger puts it like this. Amid means existence is ruled by entity. Existence is at the mercy of entity. Existence is body and life. It does not have nature merely as an object to contemplate, but it is nature. Not in the way that it represents a conglomerate of matter, body, and soul, but qua transcending entity, existence, ruled and determined by it. Determined by it, existence finds itself amid the entity which rules it. It concerns a fundamentally broader, more original concept of nature, natura nashi, from itself, the existence of which is not effective as a free self. For this reason, existence is not such that it occurs to it to enter into a relationship with nature, but rather behaves freely amid nature. It is already in it. Existence has no control over the fact that it is contained within, amid, the state of being ruled by entity. When today, painters like Gerard Richter paint out of focus, photographers use out of focus shots, and Woody Allen says in one of his films, help, I'm out of focus. And then, in contrast to his fellow actor, who is in focus, in every way, actually appears out of focus. This cry for help is the expression of a new theory on both our reality and new aesthetics. The customary attitude to being in focus, to reality, precision, divisions, and distances, is shattered and transformed into a situation of oscillating reality. As a result, it becomes clear to the onlooker that the state of visibility is only a passing moment of an animated and moving process, and reality appears much more as a medium than as a concrete factual existence. A theory on this medium must therefore be different from the others up till now. Like in Mille Plateau by Deleuze and Guattari, this theory is arrived at if instead of starting with basic foundations, elements, or building bricks, one starts with a frenzy of imminence, multiplicity, mixtures, polyphony, and ambiguities. These constantly swamp our customary differentiation between conscious and unconscious, nature and history, body and soul. Multiplicities are the reality. They do not assume any unity. They do not accept any totality and they certainly do not have their origins in any subject. Subjectivizations, totalizations, and standardizations are processes which arrive within the multiplicities and emerge from them. We produce environments as external worlds and organize regions as internal worlds, in between our walls and boundaries, within which we actively live and which move. Depending on the meaning and situation, we withdraw from certain regions or dissolve into them. But not only do we constantly go from one region to another, the regions themselves merge with each other and communicate as a result. Influencing a number of regions leads to the creation of territories. In between regions constantly play a decisive role as chaotic potential for the creation of new regions. Thus, a model of our life situation must be in the form of a structure from this region and correspondingly be composed of various materials of different layers and strata which belong to various spheres of life and to various associations of meanings. Hence, the model of our medial existence corresponds more to a structure of origination and nonlinear expansion, and therefore the logic of it is also rather decentralized and tends towards a muddled murky logic, such as fuzzy logic. Like life situations, the model establishes itself at several levels and in several dimensions at the same time. Therefore, regions such as scientific theory, physics, logic, psychology, politics, art, etc., constantly interact, and in this way, the model becomes a kind of geology, which sees existence as being in layers, folds, faults, and sediments. Many maps are used, guides, which open up the different regions. As a result of interweaving, the dominating central ideology is deprived of its power and the incidental, the peripheral increases in value and is identified as constitutive. Like in the films of today, an infinite number of different situations come together in more or less successful synchronization. Our model aims at a situation which corresponds to the incidental character of life. It is about the process which permanently falls apart and changes its situations. Okay, thank you. I will have a, a short stop and um, <coughs> I want to explain on to pictures, um, the difference between uh, the classic uh, vision of body and uh, human beings and the new 
vision of human beings. Um, so, may I, uh, may, may you help me, maybe? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, this is like, um, this is uh, the modulo from uh, Le Corbusier, you, you know, and um, the, the it, it is uh, the body seen from outside, it's this uh, body um, isolated from situations, and um, the new uh, picture on the left side you see a, a, a drawing from uh, Paul Klee, the painter, and you see um, uh, the modulo, the new modulo, or the, but, uh, or the, the picture of a new um, human being uh, is um, not an um, not an object like the modular. It is a um, a field um, embedded in the situation, and the boundaries um, um um das in in diesem Feld the boundaries in this field in this human being are boundaries and they will mu move permanently. They will move. For example, when uh, you are angry, uh, you you um, you get uh, smaller, and wi when you are happy, you get uh, greater. You expand yourself, and this is um, when when you have this uh, this look, you you understand that uh, you, uh, human beings are more than what we see. What we see are the um, bodies of persons but we don't see the space of the persons. And uh, um, some persons have a lot of space and uh, other persons have uh, a very small space because they are uh, angry, they have no money and uh, they are uh, sad and so on. And um, or they live in a um, bad architecture and um, just a moment, please. And <coughs> when when you um, understand this um, picture of man, uh, it is um, consequently that uh, you have no object uh, when you build something, when you uh, begin to build something. Um, uh, was heißt Sondern? Sondern? Sondern. 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 Um, no, uh, I want to say it, it's better to um, to have this uh, the picture uh, from the side of the space of the human space. Um, for example, um, we. Uh, a wall can uh, open uh, this space, this human space. A wall can open it, can close it. Uh, a wall can um, can produce distances. A wall can um, produce uh, clo to to put you close to the wall. Maybe um, uh, when children write, it's allowed to write on walls. They uh, it is close, but uh, uh, when it is not allowed, you you uh, build walls. Um, they they say no, and uh, this is a, a little example for the methods um, with uh, which architects architects can uh, manipulate. Uh, persons and can uh, reduce them and can um, stretch them. And um, I will uh, say something more in, in the end, but here this is uh, like a, <coughs> an, a, a, cell, a cell, a cell, a cell, and uh, if you understand it, you can, um, you can understand this, that this um, construction is um, that can expand it to the whole cosmos. 
it is possible to expand your space to the whole cosmos. And, um, and it, it is an, uh, um, a stretching, an extension stretching, and this is the living space, the primary living space in which uh, human beings live. So, Justine, please yes. go on. With this model, it is easier to understand how our life situations are constructed from thoughts, wishes, melodies perhaps, little songs which we hum to ourselves and through which we create intimate living space for ourselves. From dialogues, relationships and events, from using the radio, television or telephone with which we create protective shells against a momentary unreasonable outside, from rituals, rhythms, and speeds with which we construct and contain small, medium, or long-term spaces in time. Thus, temporary living units are created, which are simultaneously provincial, stationary, and bound to a place, and yet can centrifugally expand to the sphere of the cosmos. The nice single universe does not exist. We are living in a multiplicity, even if it is a fragmented one, of situations of varying significance with various identities contained within them. And other living beings also have their situations. Therefore, it is right to say, I was wrong to believe that the human world provides the common stage for all living beings. Each living being has its own stage, which is just as real as man's particular stage. Through this knowledge, we gain a whole new view of the universe. This does not consist of one single soap bubble, which ha we have blown up out over our horizon into infinity, but of millions and millions of precisely defined soap bubbles which intersect and cross each other everywhere. If we were to finally take this knowledge seriously, that which we call Earth would also be better understood with regard to animals and plants. Number two, space is created by culture. Space is not an object in itself, nor is it merely a subjective experience, but rather the structure which produces realism and makes certain experiences possible. Therefore, the Greeks living with heterogeneous, sorry, heterogeneous places had a different experience of space from the systemizing expanse of Romans, and the hierarchical experience of space of the people in the Middle Ages was different from the mathematized, geometrized, homogeneous spaces of the Renaissance. Cubism and Impressionism, etc., created other structures of space. While well, physics looks for the world formula, which is va valid for everyone and everything, philosophy has long noticed that people create their nature and their living spaces through their own actions. The categories time and space, which appear to be so general, are linked to our actions and emerge from them. But not only actions have this generative potential, animals, flowers, music, taste, hearing, smell, and the incalculable profusion of dimensions and sensualities have a spatial and temporal character and participate in the construction of our living spaces. It is not possible to differentiate clearly and precisely enough here. Number three, space is in every point. The chaos theory now finally regards small and large point in space here and there as being not that far apart. Under the motto localization, David Pleat, for example, writes in Philosopher's Stone, Chaos and Hidden World Order, we have already considered in connection with the human brain whether localized phenomena could develop from finely branched processes. Even faraway parts of the universe may possibly be in correlation with each other and are connected non-locally. Gently acting, gently having an effect is based on a dance of convergence and divergence in which every region of space is local and non-local at the same time. The orders of space could subdivide in new and complex ways so that they extend far beyond the original designs of Descartes and Newton. As for the rest, the idea that every point or every local region contains within it an infinitely complex structure could apply not only to the space in which we move, but also to an abundance of other phenomena to which the concept of space is applied. For example, to a complex network of logical connections in a computer, various social relationships, or to an expanse of social or economic values. In any case, that which looks like a small region or a simple point could be a more complex, more generative process. This possibility suggests the idea that science should fundamentally reconsider its understanding of such systems, because what it regards in an economic or social equation as primitive or featureless elements could prove to be a development which is the basis for implicated forms and processes. 
Number four, swinging existence, swinging space. For our customary picture of man as a subject, the theory of space described here represents a turning point. We are essentially not people who step out into the world, but rather step into ourselves from the world. Consequently, man is infinitely more than that which he usually believes himself to be, and in this condition, the relationship is a more fundamental one than the love of nature many people embellish themselves with. Which is why ancient practices such as feng shui, yoga, etc. still have a future, because they promise to once again harness everyone to the rhythm of the lively harmony of the spheres. This is the interaction of things, their syner synergetic effect and the bringing about of a spiritual substance, which goes beyond that which is concrete. And spirituality is, in fact, nothing more than oscillation. The entire universe is involved in reciprocal action, which can be described as oscillation and harmony. We ourselves are sounding boxes, an outbreak of oscillations, a cosmic song. In the physics of particles, it has been known for 70 years that everything can be wave and particle at the same time. This not only applies to microbes, but also to the world which we see and experience. It even applies to man. Even the largest of the largest, the sun for example, oscillates. What does not oscillate and pulsate does not exist. It falls apart on the spot. Oscillation provides for order and cohesion, for a cyclic result which can create and end life. We must finally take seriously the application of our huge knowledge of physics, chemistry, biology, physiology, and psychology. To put it simply, we must just combine everything and simply expand the ancient dualism between wave and particle to the entire structure of the world. If in the sense of this dualism, everything can also be understood as a wave, everything can be in harmony with everything. Can be, but does not have to be. If a difficulty arises when talking to a fellow human being, then either his neurons are oscillating in a different rhythm, or he is not oscillating at all. Perhaps because of some careless remark, he has just shrunk in a metaphorical sense to a point, like a superstring at a low temperature, because we can defini definitely treat our fellow human beings as bodies and bump into them. The chaos theory now finally regards small and large point in space here and there as being not that far apart. Self-similar space, bird, cherry, lover. Space depends both on a meaning construction and on concrete elements. Every element here has a spatial effect. Yet since the elements are never, as a systems theory of the kind presented by Luhmann suggests, hom homogeneous parts, these parts also cannot simply communicate. In lived space, a house, a bird, cherries, a lover, and, ma and mathematical formulas cannot be digitalized and connected on one common level. Interplay, however, is possible. When elements form a situation, they interrelate, interfere, interpenetrate, and communicate. But they do not do so in a shared space, nor in a shared language, but rather by homology, or as chaos theory calls it, by fractal holographic self-similarity. Although they belong to different realms and unfold their own kinds of spatiality, there is interplay, giving rise again and again to connections, tensions, interferences, and similarities. The systematic unity of a situation is fractal in nature, worlds within worlds, and at tension with each other. In this fractal situation, each part is linked to every other part, reflects every other part, but not exactly. Man is part of this interplay. From this vantage, it is clear that the above-mentioned fact that we are already involved must not be taken to represent a homogeneous unity but rather as present in upheavals, disruptions, and temporary symphonies, a more or less incidental product of potentiality and actuality. Life spaces are built on a complex and chaotic simultaneity. simultaneity. Yet this concerted effect does not obey the neat law that the whole is more than its parts. In fact, rather the reverse is true. The parts are more than the whole. A bird is not a part of space. But inversely, space is a part of the bird. The more general is here an abstraction from the concrete. We must here begin our theory from the birds. Everything has a spatial dimension. Nature, money, sex, love, architecture. That is why one can say that love is an element you've been submerged in, a fixed element like time or space. Yet the space of love is not the same as that of the chirping birds. Our bodies are spaces, but not the way clothes are. Clothes are a space, but not the way the apartment is. An apartment is a space, but not the way the natural scenery is, and etc. 
They are self-similar in their spatiality. Now it is taste that prevails, now the sense of smell, now our musical sense. All of them together define our being here. The concert of the birds at 5 a.m. is a self-enclosed space that can loom over an entire day because it is greater than all that follows. Theory thus confirms what the birds demonstrate to us every day, that the chirping of birds too can be a space, and a house, a bird, a lover, a cherry, and a cherry, a lover, a lover, a chirping of birds, and a chirping of birds, and these things as a whole in indissoluble tension in the sense not of uniformity but of self-similarity. The differences have not been abolished, but everything in reality also has a spatial dimension, whether it is a rock, music, or taste. This is their common multiple. That is why one can say a natural scenery is a house, a forest is a house, a bird is a house, a song is a house, a meal is a house, a cherry is a house, a lover is a house. To conclude, a life space is always unstable, delicate, and in a chaotic equilibrium. That is, it is alive. The structure of spaces is not a stable substance, but is borne by an unstable multitude of interactions, spatial effects, and hence also concrete extension and concrete contraction, presumably issue also from taste, scents, sounds, from colors and plants, even from manners, the temperature, air, light, the mood, Man, sensation, atmosphere, thing, matter, knowledge, here constantly interfere. Cherries, body, clothes, apartment, house, natural scenery, cosmos, beauty are self-similar, spatial, and inhabitable. Life space is thus engendered by an architecture of worlds within worlds. Because of self-similarity, we can blaze our life space, blaze our life space through language, images, architectures, and nutrition, and make space. The visible and measurable extension of bodies is not identical to the spaces created by them. The rustling sound of the trees can become a, spatial ha a space of habitation, the construction site, a prison. That is why sense can open up or close down. That is why language can become a house of being, and why text can engender spaces. That is why one can say also, as Dorita says, live in language, why thinking blazes a path, why a path opens up a writing, and architecture writes a house. Writing, path, architecture, and gender spaces. Architecture is a key. Every building is a strategy, a key that unlocks the crude space reality in a different way. Architecture generates statements about an entire existence. It interprets and produces codes, views, attitudes, and feelings about air, water, animals, and people by creating relationships with one another. The design process depends not only on a building project, rather on a philosophical process, and with that on the overall reality. It is important that being time and space are created constitutively from the materials, because as Sartre says, these are self-revealing. Architecture does not merely produce structures, but ecstasies that have an influence beyond the building structure itself. Architecture must be read back into a spatial process. That is, one must also see a building in its surroundings, in the sky above, on the earth below, in the light of the enclosed void, and also on the faces of the people. Thus, Jean Nouvel can say that architecture is no longer the result of designs on the drawing board, but the result of a philosophical process. From architectural object to virulent space, the task of architecture can be reduced and crudely conducted. In that case, buildings are created at the level of isolated bodies and objects. Architectural works as objects or hollow bodies and treat their surroundings as a thing in which you can insert something, including and excluding. They are ontologi ontologically dull. They do not act and instead create an environment of mere events and established facts. On the other hand, another architecture is created if it is generated on the level of the space. As a world belongs to space, so too does a sense of place, topography, the spaces between, communication, birds, cherries, ambience, concentration, and forms of life. Consequently, to affect changes, you can build an interplay between each of the parts, which is more than a sum of the parts. As an occurrence in a seemingly general reality, architecture can exist anywhere. It can, however, also establish and maintain as effective a multi-dimensional living space in dialogue with many relationships. New ways of thinking. Suppose architecture is not a porous geometric construction, but a hole filled with invisible dynamics. 
the old theory will be invalidated because it is unable to differentiate this kind of whole. It can't be accomplished by detailed cataloging and specific recognition of each of the species of differentiation that operate within the space. This model of the space as an invisible dynamics with distinctive heterogeneity is our world today. The inhabitants and their environment and artificially erected architecture are to represent a kind of nonlinear complex system where through the interaction between the architectural modules and the viewer, a living system is created. The inhabitants and the architecture are therefore themselves parts of a dynamic flexible system. The significant features are generated in the interaction occurring between them. In this kind of architecture, therefore, the type of matter involved is irrelevant. What counts is the organizational form. Architecture is organon. It is crucial that a living communicating situation arises on such a level that it earns the name reality. In, do in doing so, objects from the realm of mere existence will be brought to a state that opens them up spatially. This architecture becomes a communicative organon of all proportions, and the elements of user, environment, context, furniture, etc., an intensely alive, continuous internal space. Japanese culture has developed the concepts of ma, oku, and shintai. These mark a not, uh, these mark a not readily translatable intimate relationship between man and space, man and nature, which is most pronounced in the traditional Zen arts. Architecture is not primarily a matter of form, but a medium for developing relationships. The space-creating architect has to therefore proceed from here in the design. Architecture is an architecture. In the future, architecture will no longer be judged on its aesthetic appearance. Instead, it will be considered in terms of how much reality it opens up, what appears to be, and how far it reaches into the rest of the world. This architecture will be more of an anarchitecture, and its appearance an anesthetic. With buildings being constructed in semi-finished form or as backstage architecture away from the isolated, self-absorbed object, their surroundings will yield more than the buildings themselves and not just take the visual side of life into account, but also feelings and the fundamental background. Form, material, internal. Since everything has a spatial effect, space begins already with the materials. Materials create proximities and distances. They lift the space and pull downward, synchronize or simplify. Regular geometric surfaces and solids are transformed to topological forms by the materials. Spaces are, are, are already in the materials. These can be developed. This work has nothing to do with an expression of will because systems generate forms internally as opposed to forms being determined, determined externally. Expressiveness always means design from the outside. Here it is about the internal expression of the material, and that is something other than the external expressiveness to which we traditionally think of in architecture. Material exhibits a certain behavior under certain demands, and thus reveals an intrinsic behavioral room for maneuver. Architecture must move in the material. Liberate instead of captivate. It has to do with new strategies that do not attract, captivate, and fascinate. Fasces equals fascism but that free people, the environment, raw materials, light, and air to transform their own existence. Scope, small, medium, large, extra large, extra, extra large. Architecture always yields a spatial scope. This can be shrunk to the most immediate needs or as a space within a space. The living space can be extended to landscape, history, and an open situation. If the scope goes far enough, with success, there will be an intensive and extensive spatial development. Man is Excuse me. <laughs> Man is pulled outward into an unknown vastness as well as centered inward in his unknown existence. Intensity is contraction and expansion at the same time. Okay, <coughs> thank you. We have uh, another stop and I will explain this picture. Um, wh when you build, when you go to build, um, th then um, it's better to, when you understood this <coughs> theory, then you don't go to, to an object. You, you ha, you, you, the aim is not an object. First, the aim is a space. And space um, um, have, you, you can have several uh, scopes, segmentos? scopes, vital. You can have several scopes and your vision and um, if you can 
and and um, when we go, when you have a, it's a soft touch, please help me. It is better. Also, nach di nach dieser Theorie uh, müsste man zuerst an den Raum denken, an die Weite des Raumes, und man kann und erst dann auf das Gebäude kommen. Also, wenn man zum Beispiel, Entschuldigung, wenn man uh, angenommen eine Kirche bauen müsste, eine Kirche, ein Church dann müsste man zuerst, statt an das Objekt zu denken, müsste man zuerst an den Kosmos denken, an das Universum, an die ganzen Menschen. Und dann, bitte. Okay, so he says, um, so I've tried to, I try to translate this. Um, he says, you shouldn't think of the object when you start. You should think of the depth or the field first. Yep. For example, if you, if you were to design a church, you shouldn't think of the object, but you should think of the... The white universe? The, well, the, the, the whole universe. The animated the universe? The animated universe. Where all people, <laughs> where all people are in it, and we are all brothers and sisters. <laughs> so, and then you can build a good church. But uh, sometimes architects want to uh, build a good church, a good looking, good aesthetic, uh, but uh, this not a religious building. And uh, you, you see um, different, uh, several um, scopes. Uh, also when you, um, uh, a kleiner kreis. Smaller circle. A smaller circle. Mm -hmm. um, uh, is, is, a, is history. History is a big space. Our history, the history of other people and um, it's also um, important to uh, to think of this historic space and to to um, integrate it in the building so, so when you integrate it uh, in a building the the building will show the integrated space in a very wide scope and um, so I want to say is the um, human beings are um, uh, it is möglich uh, it, it is able uh, human beings to um, understand in a very uh, wide uh, form and uh, um, and wh when you do that um, um, you integrate the, a lot of uh, beings, and um, I think it, this is uh, the an angemessenes uh, appropriate, appropriate uh, um, picture of man. So, um, for example, uh, Le Corbusier. Oh, excuse me. I will go back. I have it, I have it, I have it. So, then, I have the brille. Okay, thank you. Uh, for example, this is a, a hütte, a small cabin. Ha hut? Hut, <laughs> from Le Corbusier. You know it, one of the latest buildings for himself, only for himself. It, it is, um, as an object, it is very, very, um, Klein, small, small. Um, but the the he had not he had uh, not. Uh, also er wollte nicht einfach eine kleine Hütte machen. He didn't just want to make a small hut. Er wollte einen großen Raum schaffen damit. He wanted to create a big room with this, yes. a big space. And therefore he um, he placed he installed it at the uh, sea. Uh, Meer, Mittelmeer, mm -hmm. yeah, Mediterranean, you installed it? Yes, and uh, between nature and uh, uh, so the whole situation where it is it in uh, is um, part of the building. This is what uh, the, the, um, I want to show. Okay, good, so we can hear the last page. So the last is an example from Lewis Kahn. Pure function is always inhuman. 
It makes man small. The architect, Louis Kahn, had also fought against such thinking. For Kahn, architecture begins meaningfully only when something of secondary importance is added to pure functionality. A corner of the library where you can drink a cup of tea and open fireplaces in the foyer of a college dormitory that invites you to linger. Kahn said that if, if he had only considered the functions of a building, he could not build the building. A building that simply functions is not a building, and it would have no lasting value. It would not really be alive. When you make a building, you make a life. It comes out of life, and you really create a life. It talks to you. If you only understand the functions of a building, then it is not part of a living environment. Architecture begins where the function has already been clearly established. At that point, the mind opens to the nature of the spaces themselves. It is no surprise here that Kahn assigns function to reason and the nature and character of the architecture to the soul, because functions can and should be understood. But to open up, to gain trust, security, and warmth are not to be understood, but are present in the immediate experience. It is therefore understandable that Kahn did not design a purely functional accommodation box for a dormitory, rather, for example, fought vehemently for the installation of open fireplaces in the entrance hall. For he was about people and not the function of being a student. And in principle, people are built for an excess of reality. Kahn, in defense of his fireplaces, I insisted on the fireplaces so that the sense of invitation is felt. I counted on the receptivity of the girls to these rooms because there are fireplaces which are sort of man things. A man usually makes the fire. My clients needled me about keeping these fireplaces. They succumbed to the psychological importance of the fireplaces. They were costly and the building was very strictly budgeted. They felt that I was right, that they were a part of the life of the building, the character of it. Okay, thank you very much, Justine, for the very good reading. I want to give you an applause. <laughs> so, thank you very much. Um, I hope you could understand some things. And uh, if you want to ask me something, then please begin. And uh, Valent <laughs> Valentin, please help me, yes? <laughs> okay. Yeah. I wanted to ask about the process that uh, you'd go through as a designer. Um, it seems a very challenging one, something very different to design a building based on a universe or an environment or a quality rather than, I mean, uh, it seems an easier option when you look at something from aesthetic rules or you want to design for an object. Um, do you acknowledge that it's much more challenging uh, to design in that way? or to think about creating space and living space. Okay, ob du ein, äh, ob du vielleicht ein, ein äh, Exempel hast oder wie man solche Sachen designt, weil er der Meinung ist, dass es vielleicht sehr viel mehr, sehr viel schwieriger ist ähm, äh, nach den Regeln des Universums oder vielleicht in anderen Dingen, die du genannt hast, zu designen, anstatt einfach ein Objekt zu designen. Ah, okay. Wie man, wie man designt nach deinen Regeln. Ah, das ist falsch. Um, <laughs> this is wrong. The, 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 it is, um, ich, ich sage auf Deutsch. Okay. Um, I, I don't mean that it is, uh, that you will, you, you um, may build um, after rules from universe. It is, uh, you are the creator. You are the creator. And, um, um, I, I don't mean that uh, there are rules and you, you take it and th you build something. It's not an um, I ideology, what I mean. Uh, I mean you are the creator, you are free, and you can uh, have your own view on the world. You have your own feeling of universe and you have uh, your own selection of materials and your own um, experience with uh, the world, and uh, th this is what I want to uh, further. Support. Support, yeah. Not an, not, not an ideolo ideology, so uh, like, a, like a sect. Like a sect. Sect, yeah. 
Maybe uh, it's my translation. Yes. Sorry, it's a wrong. I, I, I think he wants to know how he goes to the next level. How he goes to the next level. Ja, ja, okay, verstehe. Wie, wie, wie sollte man da herangehen? I'm just um, saying how, if you can give an example, how to approach may, this. Maybe an uh, example. Um, two examples. Maybe um, uh, Ray, uh, Eames, the, the Charles and Ray Eames. The, um, he was an architect and, and she was an artist, a Bildhauer. Sculptor. sculptor, 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 and uh, they are they were very interested in everything. They made pictures. Uh, she was painting. She made uh, sculptures. They um, they were interesting in uh, technique, in uh, philosophy, in cultures. They they visited uh, India, USA, and. Um, They were like children. They, they experimented. Um, maybe, uh, for example, uh, one time um, a, a, a person wanted to sell them for uh, Christmas um, Christbaumständer. Christmas tree stand. stand. Yes, um, made of plastic. And ho horrible design, and uh, and Ray Charles said, um, "Oh, horrible design, but the plastic is very nice." And uh, they experimented with plastic, and uh, therefore you have now you have the plastic chair. This is uh, the, the the thinking of the, them. Or um, Herzog and Dömeron, you know, yes. the architects, uh, the same figure, one is an uh, artist, the other is architect, and they are very um, verspielt. Playful. Playful, yes. And uh, they take a, a, a thing and uh, they transform it in other um, Maßstäbe. Scales. Scales, in other scales. They take a lamp and they transform it to a Prada store in uh, Tokyo. And um, this is uh, It, it's all in um, in fluss, in flow. They they have no um, um, hard, also um, feste, no solid. no solid uh, state. It it is um, more uh, fluently, yeah. And um, I think when you want to build something for a very wide space, for a universe or so. You have to first. You have to um, bring yourself to feel the universe, and uh, it's, it makes no sense to read and transform the reading into a building. You have to uh, maybe you go for a walk for several months or so in the uh, mountains, and then you have ideas, uh, but um, out of the situation of a universe universal uh, experiment, experience. So the first is you have to, to uh, do something by yourself to, to make the ex experience for these uh, dimensions. And then other, the other step is uh, m automatically, I, I think. Yeah? Okay. Maybe I ask a question. Mm -hmm. um, so you've been working on this for quite some time, writing this book and articles, and now you actually wrote also the, a text for an exhibition in, in Nuremberg. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm just wondering, um, how, how do your colleagues, or how is this received in, in Germany with very the, the serious German practitioners? <laughs> yes. what, do, what, do, what do they say? With lots of they are not. They are not very um, pleased. Can man say erfreut? <laughs> They're not very pleased because they have a very um, uh, simple picture of man, 
uh, for example, when uh, the theme is a, a garden, children, kindergarten, can we in English say, yeah. kindergarten, um, it, it's not the first theme to uh, look for children, what they want, what they do, what, what they feel and so on. Um, they first, they look for the material, for the forms, for the uh, aesthetic. And therefore I, and, and I experimented with children, with a, a center of youth, with uh, several um, cultures in, in this uh, kindergarten and so on. And, um, and this is uh, for, for colleagues, it is um, stirrend, it was disturbing a little, because it is, um, they didn't uh, want or they didn't learn it, I don't know, but um, architects um, um, mostly, meistens, mostly are fixed, fixed? fixed on material, on object, on forms, and uh, they have often a problem with uh, human beings. And therefore, um, the contact is okay, but uh, I think uh, there is a, f a future for the common um, centuries that architects uh, learn the biological, the um, soft, uh, the uh, lively um, dimensions and then uh, a s second uh, step they create uh, spaces and, and, uh, and architecture. Uh, you, you saw one picture from Herzog und Dömerow, um, maybe I can show it again. Here, um, you, s you see, oh, so this is ours, ah, okay, okay, that I, c I can explain it in words, okay, um, you saw um, a building, a facade, a, um, made of um, beton, beton, concrete, and uh, you saw um, an, a no, um, a no color, and uh, <coughs> only um, the from iron, the oxidation from iron. Here, you see the um, facade, the, the building, and um, there is a there is the concrete. There is a oxidation from from iron, steel, and there is a, um, the tree, and the light, and the light, and. Uh, the light makes the tree uh, shadow, to spend shadow, to make shadows, and the shadow is on the building, and um, the building is, uh, is um, deemed, so deemed, is deemed, dem Baum, als Hintergrund, serves the tree, serves the tree. Oh. okay, um, <laughs> The the building is not uh, uh, egocentric, ego egoistic. It it um, it is a little um, be behind. So yes, so, so the tree can um, can uh, show itself, and um, and then there is a a playing um, and Wechselspiel, a play between all these elements. And this is what uh, I'm, I meant in uh, with a um, Schwingung, so an, a wave. Yeah. There is a wave or an, an, uh, an inner a atmosphere or an inner um, friend friendship yeah. between building, between building and, and tree and light and uh, uh, this uh, pa painting and, and uh, and iron and so on, and this is a uh, this is more than an object. It is um, 
something like uh, virulent and vivid, vividly, bunt, oder? Lebhaft? So, yes? Okay. Genau. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Uh, then uh, thank you again for coming and uh, thank you very much and very good uh, future for you all. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>